In the middle of November 2020, great year by the way, Microsoft and Sony released the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 video game consoles. It was to be expected, of course. The Xbox One, which wasn't Microsoft's finest console, to put it very mildly, released seven years earlier during the same month of November. And, like clockwork, the PS4 also released seven years prior. This is how you share your games on PS4. Thanks. Also on the same month. You'll notice a pattern here of both companies doing the exact same stuff. It's why you see videos examining the same games on both systems with a magnifying glass to determine if there's any noticeable differences in graphics between the PS5 and Xbox Series X versions. And spoiler alert, they're the same picture. There are almost always no differences that a sane person could ever care about. While I wasn't a big fan of the Xbox One or PS4, you gotta admit, the competition, the Wii U, was not exactly Nintendo's best console. You blew it. Fish. <sighs> and so, a ton of games released during the eighth generation of consoles for the Xbox One and PS4. So I would never ask the question, what was the point of the PS4 and Xbox One? Clearly, there was a point, and the point was, you needed those consoles to play more than the handful of good exclusives on the Wii U. But now, in 2024, and frankly much earlier than that, things have radically changed. The Nintendo Switch released in March 2017, and it took the world by storm with incredible exclusive games. Of course, you had Zelda, Mario Odyssey, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and yes, I am including it and so many other great new first-party exclusives in the first year alone. But also, for the first time since probably the GameCube, or arguably the Wii, a Nintendo console had pretty stellar third-party support too. Based on my research, there's about 180 exclusive games you can only play on Nintendo Switch. You can't even play these games on prior Nintendo systems. Well, with almost no exceptions. This includes first party and third party titles. That number does not include multi-platform releases, which would take the number up to nearly 7,000 games. Yes, a lot of those games are complete garbage. And that is why I'm not going to talk about multi-platform releases in this video. And also because every system has multi-platform games. So, how does the PS5 stack up? It's like 15. 15 games. That's 1-5, not 5-0. Oh. Now, to be polite, if you include PlayStation VR 2 exclusive games, which not even Sony cares about anymore, that takes the number up to... Still under 20. And guys, <laughs> oh my god. Guys, this number still includes remasters, like The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered, and remakes, like Demon's Souls. It's been almost four years since the launch of this console. Sure, there are plenty of PS4 ports and remasters that aren't included in this list, and multi-platform releases that are almost always available on PS4, Xbox One, and PC too. But if you read the title of this video, you'll notice that the question is, what the fuck is the point of the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X? If you're a Sony fan, you could, and probably are, be content playing on your PS4 or PS4 Pro instead, and you'd not be missing anything important. Yes, I know, Final Fantasy 16 is on PS5. Well, it won't be exclusive for that much longer. And frankly, there are about a billion RPGs on Nintendo Switch and PS4 that I'll never play because they take a million hours to beat. So why would I care to add yet another one to my backlog? But okay, sure. I'll let you PS5 apologists take the W on this one. You've got Final Fantasy 16. Congratulations. Now excuse me while I go play two system-exclusive Nintendo Switch games that just released this past month. Now, the Xbox Series X fares a bit better here. Microsoft has Rare, which means we get updates to a decade-old game which has since gone multi-platform. And uh, we got Halo, which is also multi-platform, and Forza, which is also multi-platform, and Microsoft Flight Simulator, which pretty much is meant to be played on a PC, and, uh, well, shit. 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 Look, Microsoft's messaging is pretty clear, and they've literally said this in their own advertising. 
you don't need an Xbox to play Xbox games. Hello? Halo. Great game. Very funny. Who is this? Somebody who wants to play Xbox. But don't you need an Xbox for that? <laughs> you don't need an Xbox to play Xbox. You know what? I think you have the wrong number. I'm gonna go. Hello again. I told you I don't have an Xbox. I just want to know. What's your favorite video game? Look, I'm not playing around. What kind of game is this? Game? It's not a game. It's hundreds of Xbox games. Now playable on Amazon Fire TV sticks. So again, I'll ask the question, what the fuck is the point of the Xbox Series X? I get it. It's a cheap-ish box to play multi-platform titles and Game Pass games. But now that Microsoft is increasing its prices for Game Pass, it makes little sense to me to pay for it unless you are unemployed, but somehow still rich, and can beat like a dozen games in a month. I don't know about you, but I'd be lucky to beat one Game Pass game in a month. And for that reason, it makes far more sense to just buy games I actually want to play and take my time playing through them, rather than feeling rushed to beat the damn game before my Game Pass time expires or the game is removed, yes, completely removed, from Game Pass. I can't tell you how many times I've wanted to play a game on Game Pass, only to realize it was being delisted from the service in a week. Look, I liked Blockbuster, but I don't want to be hurried as an adult to finish a game. And I certainly don't like being rushed when I'm being charged money every single month, no matter how many games I play or don't play. In the end, the same argument for the PS5 applies to the Xbox Series consoles, which, on a side note, whoever is in charge of naming Xbox consoles really needs to see a psychiatrist. I realize that Xbox owns Bethesda and Activision now, and maybe in the future, that'll matter. But for the time being, it certainly hasn't done much for me. And hey, guess what? Most of those games will still be playable on PC or Xbox One, if not the PS5 or the Nintendo Switch 2. Microsoft already confirmed that Call of Duty will come out on the PS5 and Switch 2. So let me ask the question one last time. What was the point of the PS5 and the Xbox Series X? Here's my recommendation for anyone who hasn't yet wasted their money on a ninth generation console. Keep playing on your PS4 or Xbox One, your PC, Steam Deck, or your Nintendo Switch and skip the PS5 and series generation entirely. Wait for the PS6 and Xbox Gabloobie. And if there are any good exclusive games released for those upcoming platforms, then maybe give them a chance. But as far as I'm concerned, this ninth generation had its chance already, and it blew it. Fish, 